This is one of those sit down unscripted videos that is desperately needed. Um, <clears throat> and yes, if you're new to this channel, <laughs> wow. Um, I, I don't script any of my videos. And I apologize for that. If you want to make a comment, please don't. It's just not worth it because I'm not going to listen anyway. Uh, I do this um, to help young photographers, uh, to help photographers, period. And, you know, hopefully you can get some information that's worthwhile off of my videos. This video is going to be um, very interesting to a lot of you. Some of you probably already know this, but I'm going to put all this stuff out there because... You know, some of these videos I come across on YouTube, and I do watch them. Believe me, I, I go through the channels and I listen to what's, what people are saying. And, you know, because I'm doing this now, so I want to, you know, keep up on everything. And, you know, the last video I watched was, you only need two lenses in your life to shoot any job as a professional. And, you know, this kind of stuff triggers me. Um, you know, I wish that were true. I, believe me, I do. And, but... I, I can't tell you how many times I've went to an event or an arena and said, oh, you're back by the board and I'm sorry, your 28 millimeter or 50 millimeter is not going to cover 200 yards. Uh, it's just not going to happen. And, and if you think you can crop in even with a 60 megapixel camera, yeah, it's not happening, period. There's no offense or buts. That being said, um, you know, I've heard comments from the cameras need vertical sensors because of Instagram. Um, you know, all this, oh my God, you can't shoot that with this. Uh, you need this many megapixels minimum today. Um, <laughs> you know, micro thir four thirds is just as good as medium format. There's just so many, um, you know, and, and I just think as, as a young or beginning, doesn't have to be young, you could be 80 years old and watch this shit and, and not have done photography before. And you're watching this stuff to find out information on where you should go and where you should start or what you should do. And it's just so much bad information and not all the fancy lights or the breaking news or the bullshit that they put out there is gonna change it. Now, I know uh, um, many of the watchers think you know, this one's been a pro for this long, this one's a pro, and they created a YouTube channel um, before they were photographers. Um, and some started out as photographers, couldn't make it, and started the YouTube channel. Uh, I'm sure there are some good ones out there. I know there are some good ones out there, believe me, um, that give great information, great advice, um, and, and put out great content. But there's so much noise that you have to get through to find them. And they're not the ones that are popping up on your channel or your feed all the time because they're not as popular. They're not telling you about the new gear or anything like that. That being said, I, I, I'm going to put some of this out here because it is just the way it is. You know, I've been shooting digital since some of you were born, okay? Um, and before some of you were born. I started in 2000 uh, on a Kodak DCS 620 camera. Um, it was a two megapixel camera, CCD sensor. I think I paid $8,500 for it. And uh, it made me a ton of money. You know, everybody was still on film back then. So I went to the newspaper and they would pay you $25 a shot that were published. So I was lucky enough that our local newspaper had the regular newspaper plus four individual other newspapers that were published weekly for each town. It was just a gold mine for me because I was able to turn images so quickly. I shot for all four of those papers plus the regular paper. I used to do 10 images a piece for the weeklies, two or three for the dailies, add that up times 25 and you know what kind of money I was making back then. I made up for that camera very quickly. I'm just gonna say that it was paid off very quickly and I used it for probably a, a year and a half. And my very first Nikon Digital, full Nikon Digital, because remember Kodak DCS620 was a Nikon body. But I got the Nikon D1X in 2001, I believe. Now, this, 
this was a five megapixel camera, 5.3 effective. And I, I used the hell out of that camera. I thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread coming from a two megapixel on the Kodak DCS 620. Um, you know, in today's realm, you, the YouTube photographers wouldn't be caught dead with this camera. You couldn't shoot anything with this camera. But you have to remember that as, as working professionals, we looked for gear that worked for us. We looked for lenses that worked for us and we captured subjects. We didn't capture bokeh and backgrounds and corners. We worked, you know, we created images for our clients and we got paid. You know, we didn't create this shit to pixel peep it and look on YouTube to say, you know, what could I buy that's going to make my photos look better? You know, we just had to do what we had to do, and that was it. Now, the images I'm going to put after this, very short, um, but you really want to stay and watch these. Um, I've had some, some historic moments captured on very small, censored, very weak, based cameras based on what they are today. Uh, but they were powerful workhorses in my day. Um, and, you know, again, the YouTubers would say, it's not possible to do what you do with these cameras today. Um, but, but we had to make it possible because it's all we had to shoot with. Now I know when, when I, when I went to, from the D3X or the D1X, I'm sorry, it was the D1X in 2000. I think that was $5,000, um, uh, which this, this is what cracks me up is I paid 10 for the, for the DCS 622 megapixel. I paid 5,000 for the D1X, you know, people are bitching me that I spent 8,000 on a Leica, um, and the build quality is just spectacular. Yeah, it had some issues, but I don't care because they fixed them. Um, and lenses that'll stay with me uh, for a lifetime versus, you know, swapping them out every three years because something new came out. That being said, um, you know, going through the D1X, um, I went to the D3X. Um, now, when I got the D3X, it was a 24 megapixel camera. That was eight thousand uh, dollars, seventy nine ninety nine. Um, I don't remember what year that was. I'm going to look up what year that was because it, that was a big. God, that was a great camera, um, and I remember saying the D three X it was two thousand eight. I got that in January. I got that in January of two thousand nine. It came out in December two thousand eight. Yeah, it was eight grand, um, and it, man, that was a workhorse. But I'll never forget, I was like three months into this camera uh, and I, I just remember saying, I'll never need another camera after this. This is like, I can die with this one and I'll be happy. It was 24 megapixels. Um, and you know, ironically, like today, there's still 24 megapixels camera. that are just spectacular. Um, and I, I think it was that switch over to the full frame, um, you know, because the D1X, uh, the 620, they were all crop sensor. CCD. I missed the CCD colors because they were spectacular. Anyway, um, so the D3X was just everything to me. It was 24 megapixels. And then when mirrorless came out, I didn't jump right on board with the Sony a7 because um, it was just not appealing to me at that time. It did have problems and, and so forth. And I did hand hold one at one time. But then they came out with the a7 R2 and I jumped on that one. That's when I switched from Nikon to Sony. And I used that camera for years, years. Um, it was just, I hated the color science, but I love the image quality. Um, to this day, I think that image quality is spectacular. Again, color science, it, yeah. And for me, you know, I, I started on Photoshop one <laughs> and, and went through every iteration. Um, and I believe me, when I tell you that your megapixel obsession or your sensor size obsession or your lens obsession, you know, we are so geared into absolute perfection with image quality. We just don't even think about what we're shooting. 
Um, you know, I don't care how great the image quality is, corner to corner sharpness and all this other crap, um, dynamic range and, and everything that they have you focused on and lead you to believe that you have to have, again, because, you know, they need views on their channel, they want to make money, manufacturers want to sell cameras, you know, no one just sits and says, uh, what about the subject? <laughs> like the, the subject is never a conversation piece when they're looking at a new lens or a camera or a, it just, and then I have idiots saying we need a vertical sensor for Instagram and we need only two lenses to make it in this career. <laughs> I, it's just mind boggling to me. I'm trying to keep it clean. Um, anyway, so I want to show you a set of images um, and you know, one or two were from the original days. Um, I, I don't have any of the Kodak DCS 620. I have those in older video. Um, and, and they are hanging as 11 by 14s on my living room wall. Uh, and I promise you to this day, I don't look at them and go, if only I had. And the people that see them look at them and go, oh my God, they're wonderful. They're my baby, my daughter, um, when she was, you know, just a baby. Uh, I think she was one year old when I started shooting her with the Kodak DCS 620. Um, but they're spectacular images. The color, the quality, everything is just spectacular hanging on my wall. Um, no complaints, nobody gives a shit what camera I shot it with or what lens I shot it with. They just care that it's my daughter as a baby and, and they're beautiful images. Anyway, so these images are gonna start with a couple from the D1X. Um, and these are historic images. Um, you know, something you can never get back. Um, they were very important at the time. Uh, they're very important today. But the other images, you may recognize some people, you may not. I'm just not going to throw any names out there. Just, they're just images that are very important to these people. Some are very important, period. Um, but they were all shot on old cameras that YouTubers today wouldn't be caught dead using. Now, if we didn't use those, <laughs> we would never have these images. Like when I shot with a Pentax K1000 for sports, it was impossible for a photographer today. They couldn't do it, it's not possible. Hell, they can't shoot a wedding with a camera that shoots five frames a second, I'm, which still boggles the mind. All this being said, I just wanted to share with you some of these images and, and the importance of the camera and subject um, correlation versus the perfection and megapixel and everything. Now, me personally, I like full frame. You know, I, I've had, again, since 2000, I've been shooting digital full time, nothing else, okay? And I've been through all the iterations of Canon, Sony, Nikon, um, I, I, Fuji, I've done them all um, over and over. Um, I've shot everything out there and I shot them for years, not for a couple days and did a review on them. Um, and that's the other thing, you know, people ask me like, why don't you ask people to subscribe? Why don't you ask people to like your phone? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm not in this for YouTube. I'm in this to help. Okay. Um, let's just get that out of the way. Anyway, here are some images. I'll, I'll narrate a little bit, but not, I'm going to try to keep my mouth shut through most of it, which you know I can't do, but it's, you know, I'll try. Um, but these images are, are, are important. And I promise you that no one will ever ask what camera, what lens, or bitch about the megapixels that were used to capture these images. So, Take all this shit with a grain of salt that you hear off of YouTube. Um, you know, do some deep diving into some of these people and, and look at their images and their portfolios online um, because that's a real tell as well. I'm not the best photographer. There's a photographer out there shooting with a seven-year-old camera that can freaking shoot circles around me. There's many of them. And, and they're not bitching about their equipment. They're just out there working and taking pictures. Um, you should do the same. Here's some photos. Now, I started digital in 2000, but I started photography in 1982. This was at The Tonight Show right before the show started. It's a quick photo took, taken in three seconds. These are classic jazz musicians that 
I mean, it's an iconic image. It sucks, but it's so important to those people. This is Sidney, Sidney Crosby's very first time on NHL ice. A historic photo. Unbelievable quality. 5.3 megapixel effective. It just did the job. I had no problem with this because of the speed, because, I mean, it was an old 80 to 200 lens, and, and that lens was actually smashed during this game with a puck. Um, but they just worked. You know, I'm, I wasn't worried about the megapixels. This is Kelly Clarkson's very first time on stage after winning American Idol. I mean, 5.47 megapixels. This was printed in a magazine. It works, okay? This stuff, like, nobody asked. Nobody cared. Now, going from one extreme to the next, this is the Hasblet X1D Mark II, one of my favorite sensors of all times. Still today, one of my favorite sensors. This is seven years old at this time, and I still think it's one of the best there is today. My point I'm trying to make is stop focusing on megapixels and sensor size and everything else. Like commercial work, yeah, they're going to require large sensors, medium format. Um, they have requirements. But for everything else, it's all noise. And by the way, they were Daughtry at 60, with the A6500. Um, these images are in between D3X and A7R2. Um, but the quality is there. The images are there. But the subject matter is what matters in these. No matter what the quality was or the lenses were, like I promise you that every camera and every lens that I'm using on these images, YouTube photographers wouldn't be caught dead with and will tell you you can't use them. They won't work for what, you're, what you want to shoot. They do work. They capture images. Unless you're shooting commercial and you have requirements, forget the noise. Just go out and shoot. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the images. Um, and if you have any questions, leave them below. Thanks for watching as always.